Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Spirits and Monsters of Old Seattle. When we left our investigators, they had just crept up to the front door of the small cabin of Ode Kipper Bird. Thanks to some quick work with a set of lockpicks, Kaylin was able to force open the door, and inside you saw the man himself, disheveled, panicked, sweat beating down his thick neck. And in his hands was what looked like a flask, which when he unstoppered it, contained a glowing golden liquid. What are you all going to do? First question uh, I have, is he wearing a coat? Uh, you know, that is an excellent question. I don't think he is. Uh, uh, he's just got kind of a dirty shirt. I guess Kalen, it would probably be near the front since he just opened the door. Uh, so he's going to, like, try and stop him, I think. Um, how do I do that? Uh, so what are you thinking? Are you trying to talk him out of it? Are you trying to just, like, jump and cover all the distance? Uh, how far is it? Uh, probably about 10 feet. So it's a ways. Yeah, that is kind of a ways. Um, Sophie will definitely shout. I feel like physical intervention is going to be the only thing to stop this from happening. So he's going to give it a try. 10 feet's kind of yeah. far, but... I, I, yeah, as he's doing that, it sounds like Sophie and I are of a like mind as well. Like, Julian just kind of puts up his hands. Wait! Mm -hmm. uh, so, as Kalen starts kind of like rushing forward, uh, this man, his neck covered in poorly executed sailor's tattoos, uh, sweat covering his shaved head, just starts putting up a hand. No, 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 no. Don't come anywhere near me. And he starts backing up into the corner, bringing this up towards his mouth. Sounds very, very familiar to Julian. So if I hesitate, he hesitates to drink it? Uh, do you hesitate? Uh, can, I, can I make like an... Uh... What, what, what Make an observation have? test. Observation, yeah. I want to find out, like, because if I can, like, chill and he will chill, then uh, that's fine. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Nothing. I'm going to push Looks it. Looks like zero successes on four dice. You're going to push it? Wait, you're going to push a roll? Yeah, what? I know, right? Off to a strong start. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go. One success. All right. I, and what condition is Kalen getting? Um, I think he's going to get angry. Like, <laughs> uh, this guy is kind of being a jerk about this. Like, we just want to talk, and he's going to be drinking some mermaid pee. Like, this is not cool. I will be supportive whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, just chill, dude. Uh, yeah, so. You are being helped. Do not resist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so this man is on a knife's edge. Uh, he is torn right now between fighting and panicking and bolting and flinging himself through a window. Uh, he is about as frayed as it's possible to get. Um, the right. way that he is looking at this concoction in his hand, uh, which I'd like to, to clarify this with you, it doesn't look like mermaid pee. It does to me. Not that Kalen would know what that looks like, but this That's almost... What it looks like. I have so many concerns about you. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'll give you this as a freebie on your observation test. It's not mermaid urine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what observation is. Yep, but still, you just get that for free. That's the information you have. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to kind of, just as I see him kind of backing into the corner again, I kind of put my hands put my hands where he can see him and uh, I'm just going to try to kind of talk him down, calm him down. Hey, Kipper, buddy, you're looking a little, I don't want you to catch a chill and I hope I don't regret this, but I'm going to take off my coat. Let me just here, come, come on over. Stay back, stay back, stay back. 
I, I understand I, it's it's probably really scary right now. We're just here to help you. Uh, Kaylin, you got the sense that if you tried to approach much closer, uh, he would snap and bolt and do something. Uh, you okay. think it about halfway across the room, you're still safe. Okay. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pausing and letting uh, Julian work his magic. Uh, mm -hmm. But if the guy looks like he's going to drink it, I'm going to try and physically stop him. But okay. I, until that time, I'm chill. Mm -hmm. uh, Julian, getting closer to him clearly makes him more nervous. I will stop. I mean, as soon as he starts looking particularly panicked, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop in place. Again, just trying to be very soothing hands. I guess, well, one of them now has the coat and is kind of mm -hmm. handing it up towards him. Um, you know, it's going to be all right. We're, we're here to help. And uh, here, you, you look like you're going to catch a chill. Uh, make a manipulation test for me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, whisper to Julian, like, this guy is like a hair's breadth away from uh, like losing his mind. He's really scared. Well, that is zero successes on eight dice. Um, we are so ridiculous. good at this game, you guys. Like, I listeners, will... you have no idea how skilled we are at rolling digital dice. Like, we're just. So I am good. eight skilled, but not. masters of our craft. Yep. Yep. Push yeah. it. Push it. Uh, yeah, no, I am going to go ahead and push this one. Uh, so I do not tick the box yet. I'll go ahead and reroll it. Um, and I'm sorry, Brian, I'm just taking a look at my character sheet. The friends in low slash dingy places. Mm -hmm. That's not something I can use here, is it? Absolutely. I don't remember is. what that is. Oh, that was an extra advantage you got from mm -hmm. crushing it on a roll with Boars and Alba. And how does that one, what would it uh, So if you want to use that as an advantage, that gives you a yeah. plus two bonus on the dice. Okay, uh, let me go ahead. I would, and I'll... I would even be so nice as to let you use it before rolling uh, that push roll if you'd like. So if you want to roll two more. Roll two more? Okay. Nope. Uh, but all right, I will go ahead and, and push that roll. Okay. So um, before becoming... We've already got somebody who's angry, so we I have will two be people who are angry. We got two people. Well, we can't all be angry. I mean, that would we just can. Be... We can, and Am we should. Am I also angry? You are. The organizational system pissed you off in the library <laughs> so much. God <laughs> damn it! These are not. What kind of order are these even in? Yes, I sorry. believe the actual <laughs> condition you gained was hella pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's on brand. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I will go ahead and re-roll this here. That is an additional zero successes on 10 dice. So out of 20 dice, that is zero successes. Uh, We're really good at this game. Statistically bullshit is what it is. Yep, yep. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's all I can do. Um, yep. I, I am hopeless. <laughs> Uh, so Julian starts talking to him in this calm, soothing voice. Help him relax. Help him not freak out right now. <laughs> and Julian, that's when you hear it. Coat is in your left hand. You take one more step forward. And then there is a rip. And you flash your eyes down, and you look at the shoddy construction of this piece of shit cabin with its loose nails <laughs> that caught the lining <laughs> of your coat. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be... What the shit? And just ruined. There is just like a three-inch chunk of the lining of your coat that's just been ripped out. I feel like the odds of that happening are like 3%. <laughs> and yet here Death. I find myself. Sophie's in this pit of happened, despair. And knowing how uh, 
like fastidious Julian is, is immediately like more concerned about Julian like having a breakdown versus <laughs> the guy drinking the fancy uh, was, potion or whatever he's about this to This was one of my fancy reversible coats too. Down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's she's like, breakdown. You, uh, you really, can you just hold on one second? Hold on. Julian, I promise it's going to be okay. I'm going to, I can, I can patch it up when we get home. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. So, uh, Julian, there is this terrible rip. You turn and look. Uh, there is just a sound of pure despair in your chest. Uh, and in the moment of distraction, as everyone is making sure that Julian is okay and Julian's <laughs> coat is okay, uh, this guy just knocks his head back and immediately drinks this thing. Oh, yeah. God damn it. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> any any I'm chance I could, like, this game. Make vigilance and agility rolls to like get to him first. Uh, as you start to rush towards him, he is just like, glug, 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 glug. oh no, I have no idea what that stuff is. Uh, he you know what it's not for a moment. He's gonna turn into a sturgeon. Uh, and then Kalen comes rushing towards him, and this flask just slips from his fingers and crashes to the floor. Uh, and he looks at you with these kind of hazy, unfocused eyes for a moment. And then very slowly, you come back into focus. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Um, uh, are you, Kipper, are you, 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 you feeling all right? Yeah, I I don't know you, though. No, no, you you may not know us, but uh, we're uh, we're friends of Tristan, and uh, we uh, we heard you might be down here. Alba and Bors were also a little bit worried about you. They wanted us to check in on you. And oh, as God. I'm doing this, I am there is a deep, heavy sigh that emits from me, but I am trying to wrap my coat in reverse around him. Mm -hmm. Um. He seems much more languid now and much more relaxed. I should probably check in with Alba and Bors. I, I haven't seen them in a while. Now, when we were on our way here, I remember that the chipped tooth was pretty well trashed. Oh, um, yeah. We didn't happen to see Alba and or Bors there on our way out, did we? No, the place is closed down right now. Uh, the window, like the door is like clearly boarded up, but that's little use because the windows are knocked out. Is the flask like broken? Mm hmm. Okay. I, I, I say to him, what did you just drink? Huh? I point to the flask. What was in that flask? What's that? Can I pick it up and like smell it? Mm hmm. Uh, the kind of it was a ceramic flask, so it shattered when it hit the ground. Oh, okay. Um, but picking up like some of the pieces of it, uh, there's something inside, just barely, that kind of fizzes and pops a little bit. But it's almost like it's evaporating. I let York smell it because he wants to be involved. Uh, he immediately just puts his nose all up in it. Uh, and just kind of like snuffles around and then looks back at you. Uh, but by the time he gets there, it's gone. Okay. I feel like maybe not exposing your beloved pet to mysterious, fizzling, shining, glowing liquid is a, he not... Li he really likes to smell things. Cats I mean, have billions judging of from characters. the way that Ode has settled down here, Clearly, it's just, it's fine. This is some form of, like, irradiated whiskey, is, is all it is. I mean, <laughs> I am familiar with golden liquids that calm people down. <laughs> Not that kind, Aaron. Yep, I heard, yep, no. I didn't, no. I wasn't laughing. No, I, that wasn't a, I mean, but now that you mention it. <laughs> Although, I don't know what kinds you're familiar with, that it's supposed to be golden. That's a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm role playing Kalen with his angry trait. He's just gonna get exasperated with this guy that either he forgot or he's playing dumb. Uh, and, uh, I'm, uh, Kalen's just gonna say, 
Uh, let me know if we need to rough him up, and I'm going to go take a breather outside. Awesome. Halen kind of stomps out of this little shack. Uh, this place is a mess, by the way. It looks like someone has been trying to pile stuff against doors and then pull stuff down. There's a little cot in the back that's all like mistrewn and thrown about. Um, I would like to, I'm not going to rummage, but like look around the room to see if mm -hmm. there's anything of interest that might help us. Um, you spot one thing that's kind of interesting. Um, on a small stool over in one corner, there's something that's out of the ordinary for this room. A sturgeon uh, with a, a lot... bell on it. Nope. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of fishing nets in here. There's fishing hooks. Uh, there's a few changes of clothes. But over on that stool, there's a book. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Sophie immediately finds the one book in the room. Of course. If there's only one book, the organizational system can't be fucked up. <laughs> I mean, you say that now, you haven't got the book open yet. True. Uh, but yeah, it just looks a little out of the ordinary. Um, I will sort of like make my way towards it, but like kind of glancing at Kipper to make sure he's not like, ah, don't touch my stuff, you know. He looks around. Huh. What was that? Uh, this isn't something you've been reading, Kipper? No, I, I don't recognize it at all. Do you mind if I take a look? N no, no. F feel free. Yeah, and I'll pick it up and see. Uh, I didn't check for traps! No, I'm kidding. Uh, it is a very, very old book. Uh, and immediately on kind of flipping past the cover, uh, it's clearly suffered some bad water damage. Uh, reading through a few pages... It's the diary of a ferry captain, the captain mm. of a boat called the Chalice of Vivier. All right, jackpot. Remind me, is Kipper supposed to actually know something about the Chalice of Vivier, or was he just, we were trying to go through him to like find other people? So when... Uh, Tristan uh, apparently went looking for this ferry boat that he believed contained gold doubloons. He hired Kipper to go with him uh, right. and okay. kind of be his general body man. Uh, helping to carry stuff, helping to do some fishing, helping to maintain the boat. Uh, basically kind of acting as a paid friend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you also know that Kipper was there when whatever happened to Tristan went down. Okay. But it kind because, of looks like he may have now forgotten based on, I don't know. Well, we'll see. Uh, make an observation check. You know, the thing that sucks is if you want to roll physical dice, the, ca the character you gotta go do all your own math. it for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. One success on on five dice. Phoenix, you All should right. try it. Yeah, that's uh, better than zero on 20. It is. It is slightly, just a by, little bit better. By a wide margin. Uh, you are immediately certain of your suspicions. Uh, this guy is very definitely clueless on what is going on around him. Uh, he has clearly lost time since drinking this concoction. Uh-huh. Well, crap. You and I'll just also... go ahead and... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. After you. I was just going to say, I'll just go ahead and uh, ask him, hey, you know, um, we were uh, talking with um, Orz and Alba, knew that you were hanging out with Tristan quite a bit. Um, do you remember the last time you saw Tristan? He does not. Uh he has to really think about it and says it was probably a month or two ago. Which definitely does not jive with the timeline that. Oh, we, no. No. Yeah. He should have seen Tristan at least like a day to two days ago. Do you remember when the last time you saw Borz and Agda was? Or Agda, Alba? 
Uh, them, he thinks it was probably about two weeks back. So I will, I will spare you further digging. He's basically lost a week of memories. Okay. So I'm basically just ignoring Kipper at this point because he's pretty much useless. Um, he he does start somewhat politely asking you to leave his home. Oh, that's fine. Um, you've uh you've helped us so much, Kipper. Let's just get the fuck out of here. And I take the book and I am going to wrap up the most distinctive piece of the uh, vial that I can find, even though it's broken, just the outside mm -hmm. piece of it. Um, in case we find something either at the library or in our travels that helps us identify it, or if it's useful later, I don't know. Um, so just, I'm going to wrap will... it up and like, put it mm -hmm. in my pocket. Yep, absolutely. I will also give you some extra info on that one. Uh, you recall where he likely got that vial. Oh. Uh, when you were talking to Boars and Alba, they had mentioned that Kipper talked about going off to see the witch at in the Golden, Golden Gardens. Gardens. Uh-huh. Okay. I forgot about the witch. I want to see her. That sounds fun. Where is he? Isn't he in the Golden Gardens, too? Uh, no, Kipper is down on the beach uh, over in uh, right on the edge of Salmon Bay. Um, where's Golden Gardens? Because uh, it has north a of where you are. It does. Okay. So for our listeners who might not be familiar with Seattle geography, Ballard kind of curves around the edge of what is today modern Seattle. Uh, it has a section along the northern edge of Salmon Bay and then along the edge of Puget Sound. Uh, so Golden Gardens is created a little bit earlier than in the real world here uh, and is a little ways north of you. Um, if he is asking us to leave, um, before we do so, um, I'm going to ask him, um, yes, of course, um, we'll, we'll be on our way. Um, Oday, I don't suppose, I know this might seem like a strange question. Do you happen to have some tobacco around? Uh, yeah, uh, I Sure, I, I could spare smoke. I don't need to take it from you, but I want you to do me a favor. Hold on to that, will ya? There Kinda might come nods. a time when it'll be important for you to have that around. You'll know it when you need it. He seems very confused by this, but just kind of nods. I don't know that he will. <laughs> I don't know, Julian, maybe... He's... Well, I'm not going to just tell him, should a lake wife ever uh, accost you, be sure to offer this to her. So oh. I'm just going to try to make sure that he has something. You know, if, if it seems a good situation that, that some sort of an offering might be appropriate, <laughs> then, you know, that's then that's when you'll know that, that you should. Yes, exactly. We are so helpful. Mm -hmm. Fact. You can keep the coat. Looks like you need it. This is probably oh. incredibly garish uh, compared to the rest of any of his possessions. Yes. Plus, but it is silk. It's ripped, so Julian doesn't want it anymore. Uh, <laughs> this coat is now dead to him. <laughs> I mean, the coat may be dead to Julian, and yes, the uh, attempt of putting that coat has scarred Phoenix uh, entirely as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, get rid of that fucking thing. It is clearly a cursed item. Mm -hmm. True. All right. What are y'all doing now? Uh, as as y'all uh, leave, uh, Kaylin meets up with you. It's like, uh, was a piece of shit faking it? I don't no. think he was faking. Um, I don't think whatever so. was in that potion, he doesn't seem to have any memories. You sure? Last week or so. Maybe I should, uh, you know, rough him up a bit. See, maybe that'll loosen his tongue. No, I think we got something that might help us, uh, perhaps more than him. And I'll What's show, that? uh, Kaylin the diary and, um, maybe we can get some clues from this. It, it does seem quite water damaged. It makes me wonder if they actually did make the trip. Um, 
and actually found something. Uh, can Kaylin take a look at it and look at the like last page? Uh, you certainly may, although I will tell you, finding the relevant information here is going to involve a learning test. Okay. Can I just see what the last page says? Uh, the last page of the diary that's filled in uh, yep. is all blurred with ink that was partially dry. Mm. Uh, so it's just all smears. Uh, you have okay. to flip a number of pages back to start to be able to find actual relevant information. Okay. Uh, most well, of it... I'll, I'll leave that to uh, uh, Sophie. I was just going to see, like, maybe the last entry is like, and then we arrived safely in Seattle. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then I was driving exactly here when I sank my boat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and, and sorry, as a reminder, this seems like, what was it, the captain's journal? Mm -hmm. uh, the captain's yeah. diary. Captain's diary, yeah. All right, okay, Sophie, you want to um, make a learning test? I sure will with my and dice. Important note for you: uh, you have a talent that is relevant to this. Oh, that's right. Knowledge is reassuring. I can ignore conditions on learning tests. <laughs> and I want to. Uh, can I try and help? Sure. Likewise, yeah. With both of us helping. Mm -hmm. Okay. So take two more dice. Two successes on ten dice. Perfect. Um, you are able to, with the assistance of your friends, kind of piece together information about the common route that the Chalice of Yvir would typically take. Uh, going through and figuring out month by month what routes would it go through, how would it steer... Uh, you find a couple references to needing to avoid some petrified logs that stuck up out of the water. Uh, and Ooh. you're pretty sure that helps you pinpoint the exact coordinates that it sank. Because uh -huh. we can probably tell, like, what route they were on, mm -hmm. you know, during the last entries, and then, okay. Yep, exactly. So, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news? You know precisely where this thing went down. Bad news. It is smack dab in the middle of Lake Washington. Why is that bad news? Well, because you're going to have to carry me because I can't swim. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're, I mean, scuba divers haven't even been invented yet, Kaylin. Oh, <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about that. Thank you, Sophie. <laughs> no, they probably just just have with the big like Jules Verne with the big like you know globe helmet and the suit well, and stuff. We uh, we've invented hoses. What what I'm gonna need you to do? Here's this this bamboo stick, and you're gonna just uh, poke this up through the water. It'll be fine. It'll be yeah. fine. I Kalen is confident in his ability to hold his breath and free dive down to this wreck. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what are y'all gonna D do next? Diving is a is a is a manipulation test, right? That's that's what diving would be. <laughs> Sadly, no. What would it be? Out of curiosity. Uh so actually, swimming would be a force test. Oh, cool! Uh, I can use my walking stick for that. <laughs> if you can explain how, sure. I have other invention. <laughs> overland travel, traditionally. Yeah, I know. I'll figure something uh, out. Additionally, I have rules for how drowning works. <laughs> why 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 would you why would you put that really, Brian? Just, you know, in case we need them for anything. Why would we need them for anything? Don't Stop. worry about it. I'm sure we won't. It's so are you off to Golden Gardens? Yeah, so uh, presumably y'all mentioned the the witch, or Kaylin remembers too, and because uh, I I definitely want to go talk to her. That sounds super fun. Um, historical note: the uh, diving suits and diving helmets began. Um, well, there it, there's a long history to it, but early 1800s, like pre 1830, was when Let's they. Buy I bet one? Seattle has diving suits somewhere. They have to. Oh, Kaylin wants to use that so bad. 
by which I mean Quinn wants Kaylin to use that so bad. Uh, it would take some searching for you to find <laughs> a diving suit. Um, what is slightly more common at this point would be a diving bell, uh, which is basically like just a giant bell that you drop under the water really fast, and then it holds a bubble of air in it. Oh, that's uh, so cool. And then it cool. gets brought back up via a crane. Oh, yeah, yeah I want to do that. that didn't really, I mean, that was invented in 1819, but they invented the suits and the diving helmets in like the 20s. So I don't feel like the bell was, would it have been that common, like more common than the suit? Well, it's definitely less technically like challenging. Oh, so sure, it'll be yeah. cheaper at least. Yeah, that's true. I think the diving bell would work. Kaylin could free you know dive. We will do whatever is necessary, Brian. We want to mm -hmm. go under the fucking water. Yeah. All right, anyway, <laughs> but let's go to the witch first. I was about yep. to say, let's continue to follow the mystery and see what that leads to. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. Uh, so, yeah, hard to believe with this crew. Uh, you can easily find somewhere to purchase mittens uh, in town. And those are, all things considered, a pretty cheap expense. Uh, Sophie could easily purchase one, doesn't even need to make a check for that. All right, cool. We have mittens. Mm-hmm. Yep, you could easily buy a couple of mittens, so, so no big deal I, on that. In the text you sent us about the... Uh, she likes mittens. She, she likes it when a fisherman gives her one. What happens if a fisherman gives her two? Like, is one like one pair, or is it like one one mitten? Uh typically she only seems to seek out one mitten. Weird. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Good to know. I would have fucked that up. We buy three mittens, and we each keep one on us. Uh, so Sophie has definitely heard stories about a huera reaching a single hand off uh, out of the surface of a lake uh, and reaching for a mitten to be put onto it. Awesome. Okay. With this mitten, I the wed lake wife. <laughs> Tell us about the witch. All right. Uh, where are you going next? And what are you doing? The witch. I want to see the witch. We've been on the way to the witch for like 20 minutes. What do uh, I do want to ask when, uh, as far as this witch at Golden Gardens, um, mm -hmm. when we say witch, like, do I know anything about who this is? Nope. Oh, boy. Wow. Great. This is going to go so well. It's going to go fantastic. Hello, wonderful listeners. It's your host and Game Master, Brian. Our characters are on their way to see the Wicked Witch of Golden Garwit. Scratch that. The Wizard of Oz actually doesn't come out till 1900, and our story is set in 1888, so that reference isn't going to work. Well, before we go and meet our witch, I wanted to share some details about another Vossen actual play podcast from the folks behind Astronomica. It's called Mama Tried, and is available through their Patreon if you subscribe for as little as a dollar a month. Their game of Vasen is set in a fantastical world, following an apocalyptic event called the Transformation, and, and, you know what, actually, rather than hearing me tell you about it, let me play some clips from the show so you can get a feel for it. If you like this, look for Astronomica Podcast on Patreon, or click the link right in our show notes and go show him some love. Gunvar is going to watch Martin go investigate the door and yeah. to himself, that motherfucker is going to get attacked by a ghost and I'm going to get blamed for that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Did I... What did I... What did I do? And with glee, he's like, yes, one more! Ha 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 ha! And he starts scuffing it out, and he saves, like, one last little bit, and then he uh, jumps ass-first onto it and erases <laughs> it with a butt. He's looking straight ahead, but it, and it would be difficult for you to know if he is 
just looking straight ahead, watching where he's going, looking straight ahead, like avoiding your gaze because he feels awkward about what he's going to say, looking straight ahead because there's Gunvar's fucking back. <laughs> you wake to the feel of sunlight warming your face. Oh, God. Oh, oh so bright. As a well-known sense of aching dread rolls from your temples to your stiffened limbs. Don't say it's my mom. Familiar. I'm not my mother's child. I can handle it. I had too much. In order to reach this newly developed park, you need to either take a very long and winding set of stairs and switchbacks up from Ballard, or take a quick ride on the recently installed electric streetcars which clatter along through the newly christened Loyal Heights neighborhood. At the end of the track is a state-of-the-art amusement park. A wooden boathouse opens up onto the waters, letting sailboats drift aimlessly on the pleasant waves of Puget Sound. A large bathhouse has been built up, allowing bathers to enjoy a relaxing soak as musicians play merrily nearby. Seattle's entrepreneurs happily sell bathing costumes for the ill-prepared, as well as food and beers. All of this is built around a large carousel, which pipes out tinny organ music and features numerous mythical creatures for the young and old to ride upon. Around the edges of the park are several tents with a variety of vendors. You could spend some time wandering here, and maybe even take your mind off your troubles while you search for your potential lead. Does that mean we would cure a mental condition? Uh, it does. Oh, cool. Wow, do that, good call. <laughs> yeah, we do that. Uh, so, in order to cure a condition, you have to tell me what activity you are taking part in here at Golden Gardens. Uh, are there, like, uh, like fair games? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Kellen's going to do that and, like, win himself a, a little toy or something. Uh, so you find a few games in between somewhere of chance and skill. Uh, so you find, like, throwing darts at balloons. You find uh, ring toss games. And just immediately throw yourself into those. Cool. Uh, you may feel free to remove up to two conditions. I only have one, so... Well, you should have got yourself more hurt. <laughs> uh, Phoenix. <laughs> yeah? Uh, does Julian want to take part? As much as I would love to cure my mental condition, knowing that we are heading somewhere to see a witch, Julian has probably been dragging his feet, encouraging us to take the long way around, I don't feel like he's in a place where this is going to be particularly relaxing for him. Mm -hmm. So as much as I would like to do that, I I think he's too just feels like he's too close to danger. This is, this is not going to be fun. Yeah, well, you he's could, too freaked out. You could say that like he stumbles across uh, some sort of entertainment that takes him by surprise and like manages to take his mind. <laughs> that off might be bad story. for Julian at the moment. Yeah, no, he's not like scary surprise it's, which is it's, like it's fine it's fine okay. no he's like i said it'd be it'd be lovely to cure the condition but uh yeah this we're we're going somewhere he really doesn't have good feelings about going he'll go because this is what we do he doesn't like it he doesn't like it at all and is sophie taking part in any of the entertainments at golden gardens Sophie is going to go get in the water. All right. Uh, she is easily able to purchase herself a bathing costume. Uh, and this is all the rage here. Uh, there are spots to just kind of like frolic in the sea. They've built a whole apparatus to keep like fish and things out. So you're able just to kind of play around in the water a little bit. Uh, they have a group of musicians who are playing music. 
and violins and harps. They somehow got a small piano up here. <laughs> uh, you are served drinks and food, and you're able just to kind of enjoy it and relax. Uh, putting thoughts of the library's terrible organizational system behind you. Delightful. Uh, Yortz is allowed to just kind of play around in the sand and given a little bowl of cream. Oh, It's just having a ball. Yeah, maybe I'll hang out with Yortz during this. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah. This is this is definitely for Yortz, not for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Julian. Yep. Yeah, because bathing with Yortz was not going to help cure any conditions. No. no. Uh, Aaron, feel free to remove two physical or mental conditions. Yay. Uh, and a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more rested up, at least some of you, you gather back up near the carousel. Uh, taking a moment to kind of survey this, you've all done a little bit of wandering around, a little bit of checking. And as you're looking around, you see all of these little tents that have been set up kind of around the edge of the amusement park. But you notice, set further back than most, there's one more tent you'd missed earlier. Uh, it's almost on the edge of the woods. Like the forest is just going to pull this one tent back into it. Not a lot of visitors go over that way. There's definitely a slightly more ominous aura around it. Well, I guess we've seen all there is to see. Guess we should uh, Julian, head on back. Come on. It'll be fine. Let's go. Ju Julian, let, let's take a minute. What, what's, your, what's your problem with witches? You don't have a problem with witches? No. Why would I? Well, that's weird to me. I mean, Are you they're under just... control of uh, Lake Wife right now. <laughs> no, like Sophie. I mean, they're just Sophie. people. Look at look at my inside out jacket. I, I, I've had bad history with witches. It's like what? Uh, there's nothing I want to talk about right now. But, it's just uh, a tinny sound of the carousel plays behind you. Uh, I mean, we'll protect you. If if she starts, you know, casting any curses at you, I'll jump. I'll jump in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> that if you want, one. you can you can stay stay outside if you would prefer not to interact with her. We know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I gotta say. It. We know you love leaving the room uh, when it's a sticky situation and waiting outside while your companions deal Julian, with it. Julian does hang his head a little bit at that, <laughs> but... <laughs> Fucking psychic right. damage Sophie. <laughs> Who's I'd the real love <laughs> to be there to help. Uh, I might wait outside a holler if you do need me for anything of course but i think i'll if it's all the same to you i, I think i'll um i'll just be uh be at the uh, at the doorway there i would like you to come like um, what if what if she lies to us you're much better at that at yeah like picking up on that witches do that yeah so we need just you. assume she's lying <laughs> okay well um, i'm gonna I'm not say gonna make you that Yorts is also like like he smelled the sort of entrance to the tent and he made that cat face when they smell something nasty and um and he as you were just, starting to head over to the uh mysterious tent yeah yeah and so he doesn't want to go in there either so I'll tell Julian you can you can just just watch watch Yorts and make sure he doesn't get into any trouble he doesn't he doesn't want to go in either so as you kind of pass Yorts over to me, I am actually going to hand you my violin case of holding. Which, do you, Kaylin, do you still have my shotgun? Uh, yeah, was I allowed to just carry it around the fair? I mean, I thought that I took it back, but I wasn't positive about that, so... 
Oh, okay. Uh, when, yeah. Well, when last we left it off, Kalen still had the shotgun and Julian had a pistol. Okay. Would you have wanted me to put that in back in the violin case while we were at yeah, the probably. Uh, at there? Okay. So I am handing you then uh, the case that has both the pistol and my shotgun in it. Cool. Uh, I'm handing that over to Sophie. Wait, Sophie? <laughs> He's the one who handed me your cat. Oh, okay, fine. We did a treat. You know, as as you came over, I'm just like, you know, just hold on to this for me. I don't think I want these in my possession right now. As you are exchanging these items, uh, you hear a sudden noise up above you and see a very large crow has flapped out of the woods and perched on a nearby tree and seems to just be watching you. I wave to it. Uh, it is soon followed by a half dozen more. I caw. Ha! They tilt their heads to the side and stare at you. All right, cool. I'm, I'm beginning to be a little more concerned. Why? Y'all are crazy. Like, this is just a woman and those are just birds. I'm going in. Kalen walks in. As the birds swoop down and just carry him off. Ah! <laughs> Closing credits. I always like... knew this would happen! <laughs> uh, so you yeah, push open as the flaps you of the oh, Go in. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, so, actually, as you go in, um, I am going to take, uh, before Sophie goes in, I'm going to borrow the case for just a moment. I'm actually going to take out just the violin. Um, and. Yeah, I think I will be just quietly playing, trying to get my shit together uh, mm -hmm. outside. Excellent. Make uh, a get shit together roll. As <laughs> soon as you put Yorts down, he immediately starts flopping around on the ground, trying to get the ribbons off of him. <laughs> because his fur is still braided, despite his best efforts. Yeah, well, you know, he's, he's served his purpose. Uh, Kaylin and Sophie both step through the tent flaps. Uh, inside, the place has a kind of strange herbal smell. There is a large table with a heavy draped cloth across it. And behind it, a woman is rummaging and searching through things. Uh, opening boxes, pulling out drawers, kind of muttering to herself. Oh, can I, like, roll something over here, the muttering? Sure. Uh, make a vigilance test. Two successes on five dice. All right. Uh, Kaylin is just able to hear her. Where is it? Where is it? I, I, where? Damn it. Hmm. Uh, Kaylin says, knock, knock. Oh. Oh. Ah. Yes, yes. Uh, the woman kind of glides forwards, uh, sweeping a pile of tarot cards off of that little table and then seats herself. Uh, she is very attractive, uh, but with an age that's very hard to place. Uh, perhaps in her late teens, perhaps somewhere in her 30s. Uh, her features are very, very fine and delicate, and her dark hair has just a tiny tinge to it. Whereas you're opening that curtain, or probably opening the tent flap, you can just barely catch a tinge of what almost looks like green to it. Hmm. Uh, That's her suspicious. eyes are incredibly pale blue but have small chips of bright green to them. Her style of dress is very outdated. Uh, it looks like it would have been more at home in the 1700s. And she wears an elaborate necklace that, because of that vigilance test, you're able to spot in between things like pearls are little bits of bone and teeth. Hmm. Any chance I can tell their uh, origin? Mm, make a medicine test. Okay. Uh, one success on four dice. All right. Um, there are a mix of animal teeth in there. 
uh, some very large predators. Uh, and you also spot a couple of chips of human bone. Human bone, not teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I hold the tin flap open for Sophie. Do you come um, in? I'm, yes, I'm right behind you. Uh, the woman kind of delicately seats herself. I am Mira Askatil. What are you here for? It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, we just um, thought maybe you could help us with something. Are there other seats? Oh, yeah. There are, in fact, three seats in front of her. Okay. I'm going to hold a chair for uh, Sophie to sit in and then sit in one myself. Um, I will wait for the witch to sit back down before I sit down. Well, She's, she's been sitting this entire yeah. time. Okay, I thought she was bent over, like... Uh, she was, when you first got in, she was kind of, like, bent over and searching through a bunch of stuff. And then when Kaylin said hello, she quickly, like, uh, came over, cleared a bunch of stuff off, and then sat down. Oh, I see, okay. Um, do you happen to know someone named Kipper? Kipper. Kipper. Yes. Yes, yes. I am familiar with someone of that name. He came to see me quite recently. Um. Oday, I believe his name is. Yes. I will, uh, take out the shard of the vial and just, like, place it on the table. Mm hmm Um. Yes, we thought perhaps he might have consulted you. Um. Um. Could you perhaps let us know what was in this uh it's not a vial in this flask you sold him uh and she smiles very broadly of course young mr berg paid me for forgetfulness hmm. to wipe away memories in exchange for his parents wedding rings hmm. could i ask what interest you have in those wedding rings Financial. Fair enough. I pursue quite a few items of interest. Uh, do you perchance have rememory? The opposite of forgetfulness, whatever that is? What is it you need remembered? I would like um, Kipper to remember the things that he forgot with the drink you gave him. I'm afraid those memories are gone. Well, that's a bummer. He was in anguish, you see. Mm hmm What is it that you need of Kipper? Uh, we need to know what he was doing with um, Rich Boy. What's his name? Tristan. Tristan. Uh, what he was doing with <laughs> Just from outside the tent. It was Tristan! I'm not here! <laughs> Uh, we Don't need believe to know, her lies! Uh, we need to know what he knows about Tristan. Or, really, we just need to know about Tristan. In particular, his whereabouts. If you happen to know, that would be cool. Tristan. Tristan. And she wraps her knuckles on the table. Tristan Van Dur, that pigeon-livered rat bag. He must have stolen it from me. Oh. This is to go positively awful for him. Uh, and she looks just over the moon. Kaylin smiles too. I know, I definitely feel like this lady is Kaylin's cup of tea, so. <laughs> uh, as you are talking, she kind of lights up a little bit as you're talking about Tristan. That rich little brat came to me recently begging for assistance. He needed an item of power. Have either of you perhaps ever heard of something called a seaweed bladder? No. Has Sophie heard of it? Uh, make a learning test. Oh, yeah. Can I do that, too? I didn't. Yes, even... you can. I forgot I could roll to know things. No, Kaylin doesn't know. That was it. One success on eight dice. Um... 
so Sophie has heard about stories about this. Uh, there is folklore that a kind of almost a wineskin made out of seaweed and properly enchanted could let one breathe underwater. That was going to be my guess. Oh, yes, that that must be how he intended to go um, into the lake to find what he sought. I hadn't asked him what he was doing, but from the look in his eye, he may have been under some sort of charm. I imagine he was getting ready to do something incredibly foolish. Quite probably. Ooh. We're well versed in incredibly foolish actions, aren't we? Well, that young man certainly is. I charged him quite a bit of money for it. A small fortune, really. Uh, while I was tucking away the money, though, I believe that little rat bastard may have stolen something from me. Um, Perhaps we could help you retrieve it. Yeah, if you help us find him, we'll help you get it back. Hmm. I certainly think we could come to such an arrangement. Side quest! <laughs> what I can do for you, I am beyond sure that rodent Tristan is going somewhere underwater to find some object of his desire. We don't know precisely where, but I suspect whatever he was looking for is where he fell under some sort of charm. Mm. Yeah, we kind of know where that is and what has been influencing him. Um, is there anything you can actually, like, do to help us? There is. I can supply you with the same things that I gave to young Tristan. That would be perfect. On the condition that you recover my wand. Uh, I mean, if he has it, we can do that. But if he doesn't, then... Yes, what happens if he's broken it or or destroyed it in some way or lost it or someone took it from him or in any case if we can't the first two would be beyond his capacity he certainly might have had it taken from him but I doubt it that little creature strikes me as the type to get his hands on something and not let it go okay well I'll if supply he has you with it... the means for reaching him and you bring me back what's mine. A if fair he trade? has it. If he has it. That's fair to us. I cannot wait to see what happens next. <laughs> Let me go get those for you. Excellent. Uh, and Sophie, you were spending a couple moments as Kaylin was talking, kind of looking around the tent. Uh, there are all manner of odd little trinkets and strange items... But on a table, just at the edge of what you or Kaelin might be able to reach, is what looks like a hand-bound, cloth-covered book. Looks like the kind of thing that might be a diary or a journal. Or a spell book. Or even maybe a spell book. Mm. Oh. If you wanted to try and steal that... You could <laughs> with a stealth check. <laughs> Sophie and Kaylin see this at the same time, and Sophie's like, oh no. <laughs> so Kaylin's like, oh yeah. I know 100% that Kaylin is going to try to steal it. No, Kaylin's not stealing from a witch. Are you kidding? So, my perspective. Uh, oh yeah, dealing with a witch, signing contracts, no problem, but stealing, that's where we draw the line. Well, for, from my and presumably Caitlin's perspective, like a witch is just like a person with a supernatural gun. Like, just because they have it doesn't mean they're going to use it. But the fact that they have it means that he's not going to give her a reason to use it. <laughs> That's it is also astute. Yeah. It is also worth noting that perspective 
may not be correct in this world. Yeah. I mean, if if this is going to uh, bite him in the ass, I'm fully willing to accept that. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of where he's coming from. Uh, so after a couple of moments of searching, uh, giving the group of you a chance to kind of look back and forth and be like, I don't want to try and take that book. Yeah, no. Uh, she returns with three seaweed bladders. These are heavy, stitched together, almost like leather canteens, but made out of kelp and dried pale seaweed. Nice. Pleasure doing business with you. Thank you so much. Uh, might I inquire, uh, and I point to the book, is that for sale? No. Okay. Do you have anything like it that might be for sale? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I point to the uh, shoot. Uh, tar- <laughs> I point to the tarot card. Uh, <laughs> what? That's a good fucking question. <laughs> oh, dear God. listener. Uh, while standing outside, <laughs> Julian is playing his fiddle, but Phoenix is adamantly typing in our group chat, everything she says is a lie. This will cost you your soul. Why are there three canteens? Why are there three canteens when there are only two party members inside the tent? Because she's a witch. She knows there's three of us. There's three chairs. She knew we were coming. Like, this is not surprising. It's not surprising to Kaylin, at least. Uh, yeah. So Kaylin points to the tarot cards and, and says, uh, how about the answer to a question? You look like you've piqued her curiosity. What's your question? What would it cost to get an answer? A silver dollar. Oh, I gave mine away. Damn it. <laughs> Did uh, you? No, I, I put it on my tab at the, the bar that we went to. Oh, that's right. Yeah. How Shoot. unfortunate. Uh, time then. Kaylin turns to Sophie. Hey, can I borrow a silver dollar? I don't have a silver dollar on me, Kaylin. And besides that, I seem to remember that you drank two or three worth of silver dollars the other night. What? No, that's a lot. A silver dollar is a lot. We we learned it's a lot. I know right? it is quite. Yeah, a didn't lot. we? we yeah, didn't we discover that uh, it's like two hundred dollars or something? Important oh, clarification. I think it was about like thirty-five to forty dollars. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we kept supplying you, and you're the one who's who's hold, been holding out on us. Uh huh. Julian, you're not here. <sighs> All right. Uh, would no, you I don't have a silver dollar? Ah, oh, dang it. Do you think Julian has one? I doubt it. Ah, dang it. Uh, hold on a second. K- Kaylin's going to leave and go and try and pickpocket a silver dollar. <laughs> oh, before you depart. Yes? Please tell your friend outside that witches, to be witches, must either bend or break. They must either bend the knee and sign the black book or break with tradition and flee into the dark. Mm. You got it. Can I get an observation test from both of you? Sure. Uh, One success on four dice. One success on six dice. Uh, You both pick up the fact while she clearly means what she's saying, she is not entirely stable. There what do you mean? A, like, she's a, about to fall certain, over? No, there's <laughs> a certain... I think, like, mentally... ...tinge of madness to this. Insanity, yeah. A sense of... almost manic glee as she's telling you this information. Okay. Um, oh, when wait, she's like... wait. No, go ahead. <laughs> When she said um, they must break with tradition and flee to the what? They must either bend or break. Yeah. Bending the knee and signing the black book or Uh breaking with tradition 
and fleeing into the dark. Into the dark, okay. Uh, Kalen's going to say, you got it, and start to leave, and then turn around and say, wait, no. What's it worth to you? She grins. What's it worth Nothing. to you for me to deliver your message? Nothing at all. I don't think she all. cares that much, Kalen. Okay. Then never mind. I shan't. But I might be back with a silver dollar. Wish me luck. I'm sure just... it will go fantastically. Probably will, knowing Kaylin, after they push it a few times and almost die and then pop back up and, voila, I got a silver dollar. <laughs> I only had to get shot out of this cannon to get it. <laughs> yeah. um, right. When he leaves, I will turn back to her and um, we are so reckless when we're young, are we not? Um, I will be happy to deliver your message. Thank you. I can. If I might you. ask. Yes. Um, which? Yes. Which one did you choose? And she just smiles. These woods are quite dark this time of year, are they not? Indeed. And I'll just like give her a nod and walk out. Uh, presumably with the three seaweed bladders. Of course, which I'm just holding and you can't, and then I'm, yeah, I was trying to. <laughs> what do I do I'm with like, all these magical items? <laughs> right, I'm like trying to, you know, make like a distinguished exit, and then I have to like open the tent flat with my foot because my hand is full of seaweed balls and. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Julian, are you still playing your music outside? Uh, until somebody, I mean, Yes, I mean, I'm not going in uh, on my own. Uh, what what has been, what information has been passed on to me once you exit? Well, so Kalen walks out and uh, he's walking with a purpose and he says, Hey, Julian, uh, can you spot me a silver dollar? What makes you think I have $50 on me? No, just one. You're, you have money, right? Well, I keep giving it all to you. Um, Not all of it, for sh surely. <laughs> uh, Brian, I have one capital remaining. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a silver dollar? Uh, we will say yes in this case. Uh, so would you like to spend your one capital on Kaylin? Feel free to say no. Kaylin has I... the, the stealing skill or whatever. <laughs> And Julian has a shotgun. Um, yeah, no. Uh, no, I'm I saying will, not for you. Will, <laughs> I will uh, kind of, you know, arch an eyebrow at you, reach into uh, a pants pocket, and yeah, between like my index and middle fingers, just kind of come out holding a silver dollar. What? What do you need this for? You just went in and made a deal with a witch, didn't you? Uh, not yet. I mean, yeah, but not. <laughs> What's the deal? Uh, we're we're just gonna retreat. Oh, so the witch is helping us get to no, no, Tristan. She's not. And well, she gave us three magic items, and uh, they they're these breathing apparatuses. They're gonna help us swim down to the uh wreck of the. What was it? The voice of the some whatever the ship with the treasure, and then so what the we witch to told do... you we could go out into the middle of the lake, trusting our ourselves to these magical devices she's providing us, and if they don't work or say stopped working while we were underneath, what would happen then? Well, if you just swim to the surface. No one thought to ask that, Julian. <laughs> right. Anyway, the silver dollar has nothing to do with that. Oh, but we need to get her wand back from Tristan. What? <laughs> you did pick the worst person to get a plot summary from. Look, so Sophie's walking out of the tent now. I mean, obviously, I as a player heard all of this. So oh, of yeah, course. I mean, I'm 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 familiar with with what you're describing, but and Sophie's um... just walking out holding these giant, like not giant, but like several canteens worth of seaweed. So, oh, man. 
Julian, so, do you think these would fit in your violin case? You How have it. Are they? <laughs> yeah, you That's have true. it. You do have it. I know, but I wouldn't put put weird seaweed things in there without your permission. How how big are these things? Uh, they look probably about the size of bull kelp. Oh, what? so that's probably going to be too, like a bull whip kelp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not going to fit in there then. Um, I realize it is a violin case of holding, but that's probably going to be a little bit oversized. Sophie's for size, and she just bends over and like pulls up two layers of skirt, and there's like pockets in her her <laughs> underskirts, and she just plops them all in there. And nice. there's like two books and Sophie is like Rock Lee from Naruto. Like she's always carrying mm. like <laughs> of stuff in her pockets. And if at any point she were to not have all that stuff on her, she could probably like her force level, like her, her skill and force would go up like 10. But, <laughs> but that'll never happen. No. Anyway, uh, Kaylin's going to snatch the silver dollar and be like, Thanks. Thanks, Julian. Uh, you're going to have to make some sort of a check on that. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, what is What would this be, Brian, between the two of us here? Uh, are you trying to pull it out of Kaylin's reach before Kaylin can get it from you? Oh, absolutely. I think this is agility versus agility. Okay. Well, you're definitely going to have the edge on me there. Let's see what we got. Two successes on three dice. <laughs> finally one success on six dice wow. so kaylin dashes forward confident as wait, only wait. kaylin could I'm not, be i'm not dashing i'm standing next to him i'm just gonna reach out and try and snatch it kaylin springs forward ready to snatch the silver dollar and run in and just as your fingertips glance over the edge of this metal julian yanks it away uh, and with a quick flick of his hand, makes it disappear. Ah, oh, don't be like that. All right, fine. You fell victim to close-up magic. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as we're we're talking about this, so Kalen, yes, understanding that you want the uh, that you want to want to go in there and and talk things through. Uh does anyone tell me about the whole in order to become a witch deal? Of course. Yeah. As soon as we walk out, I'll tell you that. Well, no, because we're having an interaction. And if you start talking, uh, Kaylin's going to get bored and go and try and find a silver dollar elsewhere. Well, I don't care. I told <laughs> her that I would tell him that. And it seems like something important. So oh, okay. if you guys are like bickering over a silver dollar, I'm just going to be like, hey. Actually, by the way, okay, she said and Kaylin leaves. Okay, and I, I want to make sure that I understood that I heard it correctly earlier, Brian. So mm -hmm. the idea was, uh, it was in order to become a witch. Mm -hmm. Was that bend the knee and sign the black book, or break with tradition and flee into the dark? Okay. Um, as soon as you tell me that. I'm going to snatch the violin case out of your hand, uh, if I can. Uh, and I am going to throw open the door and storm in. Oh, okay. That's exciting. You're gone. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I am. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to Kaylin in a minute. Sure. Uh, Sophie, do you uh, let Julian take it? Of course. It's his violin case. I'm just like, oh, oh, okay. So if, yeah, if I've All heard, right. you know, tell your friend uh, and then I get this message, yeah, I immediately am just going to grab the, 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 the violin mm -hmm. case and dramatically throw open the, uh, the door. She um, is still seated behind that small cloth table. I storm up uh, to her. I put my hands very firmly on the table. I'm glowering over her. Was it you? Rose, Cotton, was it you? Does my answer to you matter? Damn right it or matters. Or are you going to act anyway? Tell me true. Was it you? It was not. He's going to take a moment, just kind of breathing heavily, still just hands clenched on the edge of the table. And after 10 seconds or so, 
he's just going to just kind of yell out in frustration, turn around and leave. Now, you had your violin case in one hand. You threw both hands down on the table. Fair. What did you do with the cat? <laughs> oh, your thing coming <laughs> And with him, you are still. I, 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 I would have handed over Yort's win okay. when when Sophie came back. Good call. Good call. I like to imagine that like Julian storms out, Kalen's off stealing some money, and Yort's is just sitting there grooming himself on the table, and she's like, "What do I do with this?" <laughs> <laughs> uh so Julian makes his way back out. Uh as soon as you fling the tent flap dramatically open. Uh, the crows immediately start crying and screaming and uh, fly off in separate directions. Yeah, I just kind of, similar to how I, I stormed in, I'm just kind of stomping my feet back out, just violins in one hand, the other hand's clenched up in a fist, and just both are just white knuckle grasped, uh, you know, clenched closed. I'm curious what Sophie's been up to this while this has been happening. Um, I started to follow him in, but then I could like hear that, um, you know, he was maybe asking something that's personal to him. So I just stayed outside, but I was, I mean, just, it like, wasn't kind of, subtle. I was definitely yelling that at yeah, her. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, I'll just wait until he comes back out. And, um, yeah, when he, uh, comes back out, I'll just try to you know, be comforting or whatever. And did yeah. you, did you get any answers? He just kind of holds up a hand. It's kind of, it, it is shaking somewhat, but he's kind of trying to ask for a moment and just still seething, just shakes his head. No. What happened to Kaylin? Where did, where did he go? <laughs> uh, the three of you, Spot Kalen a little ways off, uh, kind of slinking up behind a fairly richly dressed man who's watching the carousel. Uh, and you see starting to kind of stretch his fingers a little bit discreetly. <laughs> That's not we're how like, you pick up. Like watching him, like, how do people not notice? How's he so <laughs> He's just so good at this. Right there just walking right up and reaching his hand in and no one notices. It uh, doesn't work like it does in Skyrim. Yes, it does. Be quiet. Uh, <laughs> so before you can actually try any of your pickpocketing moves, uh -huh. all three of you hear something. Uh -oh. Every now and again, you've been catching little snippets of that song on the wind that you heard earlier. Oh, just that would have been good. The tiniest, little, the tiniest little note here or there. But the tenor of it begins to change. And as it does, you start to hear it more clearly. And you see dark clouds are beginning to gather overhead. Quinn, before Kaylin can try and pick a pocket, okay. rain begins to pour down. Okay. Uh, his easy mark is suddenly now on high alert and is about to go running for shelter. Well, that honestly to me sounds like a distraction. Uh, except they are running in the opposite direction from where you are at. Ah, well then, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, okay. Seeing what's happening over there and knowing what his intentions were, at least somewhat, um, Julian just, again, kind of shakes his head. He's he's still very angry and, and just, yeah. Anyway, he's going to just kind of reach into his pocket and almost slap the silver dollar into Sophie's hand. I want no part of this. And he's just going to walk off uh, and try to get some space to breathe. And as you start walking off, just behind you, you hear a strange sound. There is almost a somewhat loud and wet plop kind of sound. Oh. 
followed by another <laughs> and another. The three of you look around as the crowd has started to disperse. And you realize not only is it raining. It's raining men? It is raining toads. Oh. Can I get a fear check? Uh, so you may roll your... Not intelligence and wisdom, that's a different system. Uh, mm -hmm. Your empathy or your logic. Uh, additionally, since each of you has managed to space yourselves out, you don't get any bonuses from having allies close by. <laughs> you Great. planned that. I literally so, did not. Is, he doesn't is empathy, need any help. Is empathy in this case considered like a, a mental check where I would have my m negative one modifier to it? You would. Okay. Well, uh, well let, me, would be. let me double check that. There might be an exception I'm, for a few checks. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm mostly sure. Mental conditions add penalties to fear tests. Okay, so it's at a minus oh, one. Cool. I got one success. I got two Out on of, four uh, dice. Five dice. I got zero successes on three dice. All right. So, Julian, you're okay. This is weird, but you, you're you okay. You are much too angry to be distracted by this right now. <laughs> uh, Sophie, I'm assuming you used logic rather than empathy? Of course. There must be a reasonable explanation for this. Uh, <laughs> it's very strange. Perhaps it's supernatural, but maybe it's not. Uh, you can rationalize this. Kaylin, what the fuck? It's raining frogs. <laughs> <laughs> can I propose that uh, as Kaylin's mark uh, like goes to run away, Kaylin like reaches out and uh, instead of grabbing a silver dollar, grabs a toad. Oh, <laughs> absolutely the case. <laughs> uh, and so you just catch a handful of gross, slimy, very confused frog. Uh, and, and then, and he, he's like, like has this split second where he's like, what the fuck? This silver dollar is so squishy. And then he looks in his hand and then he hears the plops and looks around and he's like, what the fuck? All right. So Quinn, Kalen becomes terrified. You immediately okay. gain a mental condition. Awesome. Uh, I mean, and it seems appropriate. You must choose one of three responses to the terror. <laughs> or probably yeah. one of four. Uh, you may flee, you may freeze, you may faint, or you may fight. Uh, I really want to fight the toads. I'm going to go with freeze. Uh, so Kalen just cannot with this. And he just slowly raises up his hand as this squishy, slimy toad is staring back up at him. And this creepy looking creature just starts slowly gumming at his fingers uh, as toads are plopping and landing around him. How dare you be a toad hater on Maine, Brian? They are not <laughs> creepy creatures. They're adorable and fat and squishy, and they deserve respect. These okay, ones are creepy. <laughs> okay. Find me a picture of a creepy frog, and I will believe you. Don't make me do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. We'll follow up offline on this one. Yep. We're, okay. we're both going to have regrets. <laughs> uh it's so, awesome. uh, you are all able to kind of reconnect with Kalen after a few moments, uh, and Kalen's able to kind of shake himself out of this and just drop this toad, uh, which hops away. Uh, and you all take momentary shelter under the tiny little eaves of the carousel, uh, hearing its tinny, uncomfortable music as the wet thunk plop thunk of toads land on it until this strange storm eventually passes. What the fuck? Kaylin says out loud to his comrades. As soon as we get back to the library, I'll do some research and figure out what could cause this sort of phenomenon. You never know. There could be some sort of a downdraft in the northern Washington area, like near Orcas Islands, and then it could pick up you know the yeah, or it could be the Vossen that we're looking into who can control the weather. It could be that. 
I mean, Occam's razor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Kalen, actually, in, instead of frightened, so he was definitely frightened momentarily, but can I can I switch that to hopeless? Like, because now sure. he's he's feeling like you know, well, now he's not going to be able to pick a pocket. He's not going to be able to get the answer to his question, and he's bummed about it. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Totally. All right. So yeah. So Kalen just like does a heavy sigh and is like, oh, I guess maybe I'll come back some other time. Um, are we gonna head right out to Lake Washington, or do we have other business? As a player, I do not want to stand in the way of that. As a character, Julian is not on board with trusting anything we were just given by a witch. Um, if you want to go out in the middle of the lake, trusting your life to an item, and I'm like pointing over uh, very aggressively at the, uh, the the tent that you gained from someone you can't trust that's your choice why can't you trust her i point to the mess of frogs uh, that have splattered on the ground next to us like what's more likely that it was this witch or the boston that controls the weather <laughs> again but fine you, if you don't want to like i mean I, I i think we should all go out on the boat with our coats on backwards or inside out. And if you don't feel like, you know, going underwater, we'll have a spare in case, you know, something happens. We may not even need to go underwater. Like if we go to Lake Washington and look for Tristan, like maybe he's dead and washed up on shore, or maybe he has a camp nearby, or maybe he succeeded and he's on his way home. Or... Let's just, just head that way with us. And, um, you know, when we get out there, we'll reevaluate. And you certainly don't have to feel pressured to, to go into the water with us. Yeah. I don't like this. But he just kind of shakes his head. He'll, he'll follow. But uh, yeah, he's, he's, once again, Julian is not in a good headspace. Oh, if I remember right, we can like rent a carriage to get to Lake Washington. And then uh, cure uh, carriage. Travel to a new location and heal one condition. Availability two. I don't know that a ride towards his doom is going to cure Julian of anything. <laughs> Helen, I'm not the I'm not the only one who's got a condition at this point. Oh, that's I true. I forgot you got another one. Uh, I, I think you're correct. That is probably not doing anything to to help <laughs> ease his mind. Um, uh, do you want to yeah, try this, and charter a carriage or do you want to just try and make your way down there? I mean, so remember, you can just roll manipulation. And if you get two successes, then you don't have to pay anything. Do I have any stuff? Julian, yeah, he'll he'll attempt. He'll he'll go ahead and attempt uh, if uh, if we see something else, if what he can do to charter charter it. He's his heart's not in it, but if this is what his friends need he'll he'll do his best on it okay uh so is this again is this manipulation then uh yes so okay. you would not obviously be able to charter a carriage here uh oh, okay. you'll need to take the streetcar up to loyal heights uh and that's a slightly more urban area so you'd be able to find potentially a carriage to pick you up and take you down to the lake from there uh, so roll manipulation, and Julian also, because of his status, gets a... Julian's got a resource of four, making him financially stable and giving him a plus one bonus on this roll. Plus one, all right. Can I assist him at all, or...? Uh, not with shopping rolls. Okay. Okay... Uh, so you are one success short. Uh, however, I do know somebody who has one capital remaining. What? Indeed. If you wanted to invest in this plan. I... Yeah, I'm fine skipping it too. Like, we try and haggle them down, but they don't bite. And so we're just like, well, we'll, you know, walk Actually, you know like what? Peasants. 
hold on. Them thematically, though, uh, I'm just looking at the mental conditions, and this would be an opportunity to get angry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Julian needs, are more mental conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get angry, and I'm going to push that roll. Very well. I feel like, why aren't you rolling physical dice? You're the one who needs it the most. He's gotten a couple successes. Not this oh, time. Oh, Jesus. That's, once again, uh, zero successes on nine dice. All right. Yeah, you... I am giving the, yeah. I pull but... out a silver dollar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Julian starts to get I mean, like, you have my silver dollar. And Sophie's just like, oh, here, I'll just make up the difference. All right. Uh, you successfully hire a carriage driver uh, who will bring you all to a good spot on Lake Union where you'd be able to launch from a boat and head out into the water. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I don't know if this was intentional on your part, but man, this you have crafted a scenario that is just hitting all of Julian's trigger uh, trigger points on this. He is having a rough time with this adventure. Yeah. I'm not going to say one way or another whether I did, but what I will say is, wait till you get to the next mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to use one of Kaylin's abilities. Mm -hmm. I would like to use well-traveled uh, talents, one of his talents. Mm-hmm. I would like to use well traveled to make a friend. Uh, tell me about this friend you're crafting. Uh, what kind of like commerce is done on Lake Washington? Oh, all sorts. Uh, there are fishermen, there are boat drivers, there's the mosquito fleet that's bouncing back and forth. Uh, there is all kinds of business going on. Uh, people in canoes, people in rowboats. So okay. people out on the lake all the time. Okay, cool. Uh, I am going to have a friend who is a small time fisherman, uh, who can give us a ride in his boat for free. And, uh, I thought I was going to say some more things, but I think that's it. We just need to ride out <laughs> to the center of the boat, uh, to the center of the lake. So, oh, uh, and also he hangs out in the area a lot so we can ask him if he's seen Tristan. Mm -hmm. Uh, make a manipulation test. Okay. Uh, no successes. I'm going to... Can I push it? Sure. Get rid of those conditions. Just put them right back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I like how I have... Kalen has, like, no money, and I have no idea what's on my um fellow players' character sheets, and so I just assume they always have money. <laughs> hmm. I'm wondering if I can use my equipment bonus, but I would need to... Anyway. Uh, yep. One success. Okay. Uh, so uh, that was one success on eight dice. Fantastic. Uh, you do know a fisherman in this area. Uh, his name is Carl. Uh, oh. And Carl will be more than happy to take you out. Nice. Uh, uh, however, however, before we get to that, can I get each of you to make a vigilance test? Absolutely. While we are doing that, I want to say that for Julian's benefit, on the way over in the carriage, I will suggest that um, Yorts curl up in his lap and Julian gets out his violin and plays something, and maybe um, I will try to like sing him a song, make him feel better. So that if Julian would like to take the benefits of the carriage, oh, he see. may do so. <laughs> what say you, Brian? I yeah. thought we all did. Yeah. I'm saying, but but it, in like in in the story, Them, thematically, that would not have been a relaxing ride for for Julian. So yeah. no, that makes sense. I appreciate that, Aaron. And yes, I will cure those conditions, and uh, I'll roll two more dice on that. Yep. So everybody gets to cure one condition. Yeah, just one condition, not two. Oh, it was just one. Yeah. Um, I got three successes okay. out of seven dice i also wow. got three successes but on five dice wow and i got zero on two uh so <laughs> julian is focused on his playing focused on the purring cat in his lap just helping to calm him down a little bit uh and as the three of you step out of the carriage 
Julian is feeling like he can breathe just a little bit easier. Uh, the weather is still, seems like it's going to turn at any moment. Uh, and every now and then, all of you do still catch little snatches of that song on the wind. But for Sophie and Kaylin, you also hear something else. It's distant. You can only just barely hear it. But you're certain somewhere in the woods near, well, not nearby, but not too, too far away, you can hear loud and panicked mooing of a cow and the occasional little tinkle of a silver bell. And that's where we're going to call it for this session. What? All right. So we will get to what you find in the woods and what happens below the waves next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Spirits and Monsters of Old Seattle. Our theme song is Myths and Legends by Robert Bruckmeyer, which is playing right now. Our music is by Andreas Lundström, and you can hear more of his work on the Sweden Rolls podcast. Link in the show notes. Our editor is Hannah Cheney. If you're enjoying this show, please take two minutes to rate and leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. I know every podcast says it, but it really does make a difference and helps us continue to grow the show. Finally, remember the motto of the library. Fear gives way to knowledge. Knowledge gives way to wisdom. And wisdom gives way to the truth. Until next time. <laughs>